Awesome. Hey guys, welcome to that photo show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. I'm just going to adjust my microphone. Hello, hello, hello. Well, happier. Uh, Your time is amazing. Thanks. It's very cool. Don't know what else to say. <laughs> um, it's not as good as uh, Mark Letiri's. I think that's the thing to say about that. <laughs> yeah, great. It's important, you know? Yeah. Dan, can you just move forward ever so slightly? <laughs> So you want me to do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. That's better. Okay. It's just quite a long way away from your microphone there. Okay. It worries me. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Okay, hello. There we go. All right, we're in. <laughs> right. Why is this interesting? This is old. This is new. Yeah. This, this here. is borrowed and that's blue. Oh, no, that is absolutely <laughs> true. Old, new. Borrowed Simon's Belly Pock Deluxe because Joey Landreth has got mine. Uh, blue. Mm. And it's also new. Also new. Yeah, it's new out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so what are we doing, Dan? We're going to have a listen to some old tape, just some new tape. And then we're going to have a listen to our favorite tape, like digital version, being the Bell Epoch Deluxe. And we're going to just explore what the difference is. How, you know, with a, can we get this thing, can we define its magic, can we get it with a digital thing? And also it's important also to reflect on analog delays and that sort of stuff, you know, what they're trying to emulate. Just have a yeah. look at this. And look, just an excuse to play with these things. Play with these, yeah. The, I guess the questions are, what does tape uh, echo actually sound like? Mm. And for that, we're gonna put that in the context of a very uh, popular, analog echo delay, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna to listen to it against the digital delay, and then we're gonna get into the tape, right? Because this, if you take this alongside the Echoplex EP3, probably the most revered tape machine of all time. Yeah. I mean, people were gonna to wanna to chuck Miatsis and things like that in there, but really, this was the one that made it reliable, great sounding, mm. and all of that, isn't it? Yeah, and if you, you know, service them regularly, keep them clean, yeah. I mean, you know, still using that. The one today. thing we don't have, of course, is the Roland RE20, the sort of digital version of this. Mm -hmm. But that's okay, we've got digital versions of other things. Um, and then this is new from, from your homeland, right? From my homeland, from yeah. the land of my people. Yeah, it's not that's, Swindon, that's, that's Australia. The EFX2 from Echofix. And so this, in the top of here, maybe we'll shoot detail of this after, contains a proper old school magnetic tape yep. that runs around and around some, yep. some spools and reels and uh, capstans. Mm -hmm. uh, as does this. As does that. So yep. this has got real tape in it as well. Yep. What's the difference then? Between? This one and this one? Oh, there's... Is it just well, a remake? So, uh, it's, it's, not an, well, it's not an exact copy. Mm. It's, there's a lot of the same stuff in there. So Shane, Shane-o. G'day, Shane. Ah, oh, Shane, mate. Shane, ah, Shane, uh, mate. Shane. Ah. So Shane from uh, Echo Fix. Shane. Shane. He's been fixing these machines forever, and he understands them inside out. So he set out to make something that wouldn't have the same issues or would just be more robust. Yeah. Uh, because these, as wonderful as they are, We've had experience with this. Well, you got through two gigs with it, didn't you? So I got through two gigs and then 10 one minutes a, before the next one. One and a half gigs. Went, yeah. Actually, we should give a shout out to our friends at Soundgas up yes. there. If you don't know who Soundgas are, check them out on Instagram or in the links below or um, on their dig various digital channels. They fix these things up and make them beautiful as they do things like Echoplexes and Echo Rex, uh, Echo Rex and mm -hmm. all kind of old fashioned analog gear and they do it supremely well. And that's where this it. one came from. Yes, so. yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So they're, they're wonderful machines. And I, for me, as soon as I plug into them, I, something happens. I'm lifted somehow. And I, I, I can't define it. Mm. But and it might just be. Uh, it, it's all in my head. Mm. If we seem tired today, it's because um, about 12 hours ago, we arrived home from Greece, having seen the boys at Jam Pedals and girls at Jam Pedals uh, and had a wonderful time there. But yeah, a little bit tired. Little so bit we needed some mellow echo noises yeah. to, to help the day along, right? Yeah. <laughs> With that dub going on. Yeah, it did turn a bit that way, it didn't was it? Wicked. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah, probably. That's the, that's the thing about your rhythm. You've fans got... of reggae and dub laughing heartily at the camera. 
But that to, to to play that stuff, you, your time has got to be bang on because that the way that those rhythms sit against yeah, the time yeah. is everything, and that's you know, that's led to the um, me telling you how wonderful you are. Oh, thanks. Yes. No, there was context. There was context. Oh, cheers, Dan. Um, okay. Right. Can we? Shall we start with the context? Okay. And go. The, one of the one of the things I wanted to just get across was that tape delay is not analog delay. Yes. Tape very delay important. is analog. Yes. Because it's it lives in an analog world. Mm -hmm. But what's the difference between tape delay and analog delay in the terms of pedals as we know them? So tape delay is a you, there's a physical process of the tape the signal being recorded to the tape and then played back on another head, mm. right? Analog is done with the German done with bucket brigade devices. Yeah, we're talking about and, classic analog delays yeah, here. Yeah. yeah, and it ends up, it's a really cool sound and I love analog delays with it. We both have them on our boards. Yep. Yeah. But it is quite different yes. to tape. There's yeah, a yeah. filtering that goes on, trying to get the same Fidelity that tape can have. Yes. It's very, very tricky. That's the thing that surprised us when we plugged in the EP3, wasn't it? That the the kind of frequency response range of the delay was huge. Mm. It was crisp and clear and loud and you know, almost what you would associate with a modern digital delay in terms mm. of its fidelity. And I think it's very really easy to get analog and tape delay confused yeah. if you're new to the delay world. Think about why David Gilmour uses digital delays and not analog delays when he went from his Binsons. Yeah, right. He didn't replace them with analog delays. Huh. He replaced them with digital delays. Because of the fidelity. Because of the fidelity, the frequency range in those things. I think we've, we've come to expect of uh, tape delays for whatever reason that they're mushy. Because you know. the simulation of the tape being old and knackered and yeah, all right. Let's hear some stuff then. Okay. Where should we begin? Well, we found a couple of amps. Yeah, uh, rubbish old amps. Yeah, went, yeah. so they just lying around. So we thought. Two Rock Classic Reverb Signature and a Matchless C30. Yeah. Epic. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, okay. So this is, yeah, let's have a listen to just the amps then. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Are you all right, mate? I'm good. No, I'm, Come I'm on. good. Stay in the game. I'm I'm rocking. Come on. I'm there. 3 a.m. Too much souvlaki. We're doing okay. The food <laughs> in Athens. Oh man. I'm on a I'm on a self-imposed fast today. We do. Yeah, anyway. Bazooki uh plectrum technique. Right, let's get on. Um so let's get the, the cleanest most Fidelis sound out of this we can then. Okay. Fidel right. Fidelifus sound. Do you want to have, put a gain stage in there? Or just uh, can... No, let's just keep no? it clean. Okay. Keep right. it clean. Here we go. So, so all, the, all the clean fan sounds out there, get all the clean sound fans going, no, no overdrive. Okay. So if you play, then I'll kick the 201 in. Okay. Very brief explanation of this before we get into the... So this is combinations of heads, right? That's right. Should we just go for a single repeat and, and listen to that? Sure. Just compare that straight away with the carbon copy. Thank you. 
that's the there only point is. I wanted to make there in the whole is. video. Yep. And to be fair, the carbon copy is noted as being quite a dark sounding analog delay. There are there are those that sound brighter than that. In mm. fact, there is a bright version of that in a lighter green color. Mm. Um, but to me, that is the difference between tape delay and analog delay is analog delay sounds dark mm. on the repeats yeah. and has uses. It's really difficult to design a good sounding analog delay that has top end. Right. If you look at the uh, Electro Harmonics Memory Man, yeah. Uh, W wonderful, wonderful example of a, a really great sounding analog delay with lots of top end, but there's there's no filtering in there, mm. you know, and they're inherently noisy. Um, the well, a delay that we both use is the ARDX twenty from Analog Man, and that's got that's got top end in, in there. Yeah, but it's still it's, it's still, still not, not bright. It's not bright. Yeah. Well, let's you know. just let's finish that then with. Uh. Not tape? No. Uh, has it just got a straight digital delay in it? Yeah, with 2290 there. I guess the 2290 without mod. Um, yeah. Modless. Modless. So let's, and this would be a digital delay, right? Interesting, it is going off at the end a bit there. Mm. But um, a straight digital delay like a Boss DD7 or something wouldn't go off at the end like that. It would just stay perfectly pristinely clean all the way. We were in... Denmark, I want to say Denmark, and we met the guy. Sorry. Yeah, who made the T2290. Yeah, yeah he, we met the guy who made the 2290. Yeah, right? he was the lead engineer. Yes. Yeah. And he told us something really interesting about the 2290. Right. Is that it's more analog than digital. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of digital control, but so much analog stuff in That's there. That's why I was surprised we chose it for the digital one. But there isn't just a straight digital one, is there? Uh, Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're not really here to discuss that. Okay. The point is, tape, new tape, clean, high fidelity, mm. massive dynamic range, just, well, sorry, massive frequency range. Yep. Um, full, fat, bright, all of those things. Analog, bucket brigade type delays tend to be darker in the repeats and go off and get mushy and distorted at the end. Mm -hmm. Digital delays, clean, 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 mm -hmm. um, without the warmth and loveliness and beautifulness of, of tape. Sure. Yeah, lots yeah. of generalizations there, but yeah. I think that's fair. Definitely. Uh, the, 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 the classic straight digital delay thing, um, and if you, if you think about We've got, you know, they're able to re recreate these things you know, almost perfectly. And a lot of people find them uninspiring. Yeah. Which is why, and, and saying that the, the carbon copy doesn't have the same top end isn't to say it's not great. No, no, no. Just one of the best. Use. Exactly. It's one of the, one of the most popular yeah. delay pedals ever. Because, like, if we, if we add a little bit of uh, El Grunjo to this and... And then I'll add the carbon copy on top of this.
So it sits underneath the notes yeah. and it's just, you know, I knew, I knew what he was going to do, so I deliberately, deliberately dialed on a lot of top end and quite an ab abrasive Sounds gain sound. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's nice, isn't it? <laughs> cool. All right. That's probably uh, enough tangent, isn't it? Should we get into these two? Okay. And see what we think? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, again, if we start with the, the, the clean... You play for a bit. Okay. And you tell me which knobs to twitch. Okay. Twitch is a new word well, I've just made up. Let's go... Um, Twitch Authentic. Let's go... Let's start with this one with the, with the, the longer delay times. <laughs> Hilarious. So what have we got? What have we got dialed in here? Number seven. What is that? Do we think? Uh, it's it's just it's it's one of the heads. Yeah. So if you think about, you've got a number of playback heads and a record head. The further the playback head is away from the record head, the longer the delay is going to be. Look at that. Mode selector. This may have been put together by our dear friend Yoshi, because when he started working at Boss, he was making these. Isn't that cool? Check that out. I, I can't honk him, but yeah. anyway. I'll give him a honk in a minute. Yeah, all right. So if you see, I mean. You've seen enough. It's okay. That's enough pointing. Yeah. It's enough of that one. No more. Let's move to something else. Sorry, what were you going to say, mate? <laughs> the, <laughs> you see the heads here, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, when you when it hits the record head, the further away that the play the playback head is from the record head, the longer the tape, the the echo will be. So with the mode selector here, you are selecting a different playback heads and then different combinations of playback heads. We'll get some details of that before the end of the show. Yeah. So one of the one of the important things with the RE201, so you will hear modulation in the repeats in this. And that modulation is all down to the tape and the way the motor is working. So there's no there's uh, no modulation circuit in there no, at all. So it is literally the physical attributes of the tape. Yep. 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 My uh, jerky movements there are all about wow and flutter. So, an older machine, older tape, you know, not everything's 100%, and that is magic. That's the sound. That is the sound. Come on. Now, we'll go to a, like a brand new unit. So, which if we one, go back to the single, we are? I think we're going to be on. No. No. There we, there go. we go. So, Brand yep. new, everything working lovely. Yeah. So much less of that flutter. Yeah. You know, because everything's working properly. But all the delay is done, the delay is done via tape. There's all, no digital no, stuff. No, no, it's all, you know, we'll have a look at this later, but it's, you know, tape. Yeah, it's the same. Same, it's yeah, the same. It's not a digital simulation. But what we can do, so one of the great things about the these 
space echoes and this is that you've got a bass and treble you've got an eq over the repeats so if we go back to the 201 Feeling all Airwolf. That was Airwolf, wasn't it? That was all that. What is that, Dotted Eighth? I think so. Yeah. Uh, Airwolf, the theme from Airwolf was all that. Really? Yeah, yeah. I think it was probably a keyboard, but anyway. What's Airwolf? Oh, come on. <laughs> okay. Santini Air. It, um... Helicopter. Crazy attack helicopter. It was like Knight Rider in a helicopter, basically. Okay. Yeah. Right. Brilliant. Must you, must check it out. Listen to the theme tune. It's literally, <laughs> literally what you were just playing, but different notes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's classical music, isn't it? It is. <laughs> um, so, the EQ. You see how effective yeah. that is, right? Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. can really shape those. But no matter where you put it, there's still this character that happens with the tape. Yeah. I think it's sorry just to interrupt yeah, you there for a second. It makes a really good general point about the EQ and the repeats you use in your delay. So if you're the kind of person who struggles with delay because it's kind of every time you play a note, it's like mm. hitting you in the head back again and you don't want that, you want it to sit under. You saw what a massive difference rolling off the top end made mm. in that. Hence why we did the thing with the analog delay earlier. Same thing. Sorry, Absolutely. mate, to no, interrupt no. you. Well, and saying this is all part of the so the EQ is really you know really important, but that there's that underlying character, and a lot of that is the preamps. Right. Uh, there's, we all know stories of guitar players using the, the echo plex without the echo turned on just for the preamps, and these are the, the very similar thing. The preamps changed in design in the 201s. If you think of what these were used for at the time, you know, let's use them recording studios and you need to be able to handle you know, microphones and that sort of stuff. I have a question about that. Yes. Input wise, we've kind of had to hit it with a buffer to get it bright sounding. Sure. So is that something to do with the kind of input it has then? Yeah. So it's it's uh, one of the issues. And so, for example, on here we have the high Z input yeah. because these were uh, a, a lower impedance input. Right, you know, so use as designed a studio gear. Think of the uh, the CE one. Yes, if that low impedance. If you haven't watched the episode with Simon Jarrett from Kingsley Amplifiers and Pedals, we talk a lot about that. How if you have like a one meg ohm um, input impedance, you get brightness and high end, and if you have very low, he goes all the way down to ten k, you get no high end and brightness, and that is why we're having to hit this with a buffer. Correct. Yeah, yeah. correct. So. 
Um, I mean, we can show you what that's like without the buffer. Yeah. Um, if, let me just go here for a second. So. Not going to change anything else except turn a buffer on, yeah? Yep. And they are set to unity gain, aren't unity they? Unity gain. There's no gain makeup happening there. No. That is just impedance, right? Yeah, so it's just, so because it's such low impedance input, you're wow. driving driving that input. Amazing. I mean, we do have quite a bit of cable going on here with sends and returns and stuff, and that's making all of that worse, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry, slight, yeah, no, but slight that's tangent. It. I mean, it's important stuff. This is, uh, you know, if you think of most of the time that the signal is hitting this, it's, it's coming after, uh, you know, some sort of signal processing of some kind. Yeah. And that's going to be a low impedance hitting that. But with guitars, the, quite, the impedance of these things is quite high. Yeah. So, we need to make sure that, you know, with the old ones, you need to be hitting a buffer before they, you know, yeah. or, or hitting a gain stage or something. Yeah, any overdrive pedal impedance. or anything like that will do. The However, uh, so one of the things with the echo fix is that it, it has that higher impedance input. Um, so, you know, as again, Shane's been looking after, um, you know, guitar players with these for a long time. So it's got a specific guitar input. Cool. All right. Let's dial in a couple of, let's get some more heads going. Okay. Get some more of the sort of typical sounds we associate with this thing. Sure. And then let's just have a play and see how close we can get and what the, yeah, what yeah, the key yeah, differences yeah. are. Sure. Okay. So let's bring up some multi-tap. So I've now turned off the reverb in the two rock, so you're only hearing the reverb from this machine. Can mm -hmm. you just give that a skank? And that's as slow as it gets, right? On on that setting, yeah. with those heads, yeah, that's as slow as the tape will go down to. Okay, so let's see if we can dial something in similar here then. Okay. Two things I notice immediately, right? So we've got more control over the reverb on the echo fix. Mm -hmm. So we've also got this decay, uh, yep. reverb decay as well as reverb volume, yeah? Mm -hmm. But this is a digital reverb. Yes. And that's an analog, like the spring type thing. So okay. 
Uh, and the other thing was, um, there's a speed control, which is some sort of modulation, is it? Speed control, Here. that's the tape, that's the, so. That's oh, okay. Tape speed. Oh, right. Oh, I see. So that's not a... That's the... That's the speed of the tape. Right. What we were talking about before with the spacing between the heads. Yeah. And then you've got the ability to slow or speed up the tape bet between that. So it gives you, like if you've got a, a really quick, uh, let's, let's go to a quick, short, like a really quick. So. Are there three heads? Yes. So what we can do now, we've got the we've got the, the the shortest distance between the record head and the playback head. But now we can slow or speed the tape up. Okay, the, the reason I thought it was modulation is because when it was happening over the repeats, the delays were getting longer and shorter and it right. was creating a chorusing. That's yeah, yeah. why I thought it was modulation. Because it does take time yeah, 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 yeah. For, the, for it to slow down. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, you know, that... So that's for us, the slap back thing. One of the things that always strikes me about these kinds of units is that you sort of forget they're on. That's why yeah. I turned it off. It was so dry and so nothing happening because yeah. it sounds so natural and you've heard it on so many records, like rock and roll history is mm -hmm. a lot of tape echo, isn't yeah. it? And it's just, it, you've, it sounds so natural and so with the sound, you almost forget that it's there. It doesn't sound like an effect. No, right. It, it sort of becomes, and that's the thing with tape. I can, I can do a gig and leave it on all the time. Lots of guys do, and just have a little bit of, of echo in the yeah, background, yeah, just, yeah. To, just to you know, fill it out a bit. There are um, foot switch options here that you can turn off the echo. Yeah. Um, so, and in that, if you've used it that way, you're using the preamp all the time. Yeah. And just turn the echo on and off. Um, you know, they're a little bit noisy. That's the nature of the... the so that's how noisy that that's one is. That's how noisy that one is. That's how noisy the old one is. Unsurprisingly, the old one's a bit noisier. Yeah. But, oh man, I just, they're a magic thing. They really are. Okay, two more things to do, yep. I think. Um, let's have a listen to, the Belly Pock Deluxe is not based on an RE201. It's based on uh, an EP3, mm -hmm. but it's tape echo nonetheless. So this is probably, would you say, our favorite tape echo? Easily. Pedal. Every, every time, uh, Obviously, this is on your board and not on mine, but every time I hear you kick this in, that a the preamp mm. in that it's it's bang, it's it's just it adds. Yeah, you know what I mean. It, before we even get to the delay, because it's like you use an expression pedal, um, controlling the delay level, right? Yes. So Correct. it is that preamp is on all the time, yeah. and it just it's so good. Yeah, it's a good it's sound. So thing. good. All right, let's um, let's call up. Let's use head three, then, okay. shall we? Uh, the the longer one, which I believe is this one okay. on the RE two hundred one. Do 
take speed, yep. I'm going to turn the reverb off in the old tape units because mm -hmm. that's a fair comparison with the belly pop deluxe. Yep, yep. Back on in the amp. Let's give that a go, Dan. <laughs> oh, sorry, wrong, uh, wrong knob. Oh, <laughs> Keep it going. <laughs> There's uh, music there. As soon, uh, as soon as I hear that stuff, I don't know why, but there's there's a thing that happens with the tape, and I'm just I'm I'm gone. Let's see it's if wonderful. we can get you over this. I'm gonna have to move because I can't read the bloody things on there. So yeah, that's I can never read the 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 writing on those things. It's impossible to read actually. Not as bright as the R No, it's warmer. Warmer where I was sat. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's. Um, I don't know if there are internal EQ controls on the. I don't believe there are. No, I think that's 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 the. Yeah. So it's a little warmer. And remember, but then the space echoes we tried have been. Um, sorry, the echo plexes we tried have been bright Absolutely. and clear, haven't yeah, they? Yeah. So okay, so it is knocking a bit off. Uh, do we need to? Let's put the buffer on the belly belly pock. Okay. Because it might be we might be hearing the buffer in the rest of the signal.
was interesting. I just love it. I genuinely have deep, deep affection for it. Oh man. For anyone who didn't know what was going on there, I was switching between variously the, I mean, the, the on-screen graphics and masking and everything will tell you what's going on. But just to explain it, RE201, the Echo Fix, the Belly Pop Deluxe, and right at the end there, the Flashback times four, Flashback two times four, um, and the Flashback eight. We made that gag before. It did. <laughs> um, and getting into some of the self-oscillation, right? So the self-oscillation mm. means, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, you the, the feedback, the decay, kind of goes back on itself and starts delaying again in the loop, and then you get self-oscillation. Mm -hmm. And this is something that all of these units do very well indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have any sense of what was being switched while I was doing it? Uh, yes, yeah, sometimes. Um, but it, it all sounded great. Yeah. The, one thing I would say, you know, these getting your your hands on one of these things is not every day. No. You know what I mean? The, you know, you hear the sounds and you absolutely need to listen to this with headphones. But I would encourage you in every way possible. If you can get your hands on one, just to try. If you yeah, know, yeah, if you've got yeah. a mate that's got one, if you know someone's got one, just to experience it. Because there's, for me, there's a difference with tape. Without any shadow of a doubt, there's a big difference in what I was hearing. Yeah, there. yeah. And it, and for whatever reason, yeah. that difference, for me, it, it pulls stuff out. Mm. And, and that's the magic. That's yeah. what's kept me coming back, yeah. you know? But you can't, I mean... We tried to gig this and you can't. No, it's really tricky. You're going to try and gig this, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm confident. I just I wouldn't because I I, I get stressed enough as it is. So <laughs> yeah, I, I just well, what I need to know is that that, that I just it's just going to work in it every yeah, time. Every it's going time. to work. It's going to be great all the time. Yeah. Every time. Yeah, it's a little bit darker sounding for sure. And I, and forgive us. I don't know if we don't think there's any internal EQ, um, but I do think that's the preamp. Yeah. The preamp does Darkening does do that, yeah. but you you know you adjust for that on the amp and with everything else exactly everything else in your rig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, or if you were really nerdy about it, you could put an EQ after it if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Does it have a loop? Nope. Some some delay pedals have their own loop, so you can affect the mm. you can affect the uh, repeats and everything. But it's endlessly fascinating. How do you feel this stacks up to this? They are different. They are different. They are different. Yeah. I I love the reverb in this. This, this yeah. I've always been a fan of the dark small tank reverb, and I will miss that. However, it sounds well, it sounds nice. This it reverb. sounds the reverb does sound great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love that it's lower noise, but it's it's the tape thing. It's the, all that tape magic is all there. Yeah, you know. This is chewier to me. <laughs> that's chewier because it's, it, again, it's that older thing where the you know that's happened with the motors yeah. and. But, yeah. Yeah, dare I say this particular one, and let's remember that because it's important to say that they're all different, right? They're all different. Simply yep. because you're dealing with that tape that is of different age. and Yeah, um, the, the wearing of the heads, yeah, how all that they've stuff. been maintained, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. one definitely has kind of like some sort of mojo-y, soupy, syrupy thing. I hear it feels part of the whole deal. Sure. This sounds great. It feels a little more... Maybe with another couple months playing on it, sure, it will be in that space. Mm -hmm. Who's to say? Oh god, <laughs> just <laughs> I know. I know. It's just I'm just computing it in my head. Once you hear it, it's really hard to unhear it. Yeah, but that's if you remember, we did a uh, was it was the wet dry show where we had the bit the yeah. Echo Baby and that yeah, on yeah. it, and since then. I it's like that's it. I'm always going to have a tape delay in my rig <laughs> from that point on. Um, because there's just something happens, you know, anyway, 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 any road up. There you go, guys. I really hope you enjoyed that. Please don't forget to subscribe and, uh, ting the bell, ting the bell. If the bell even exists, we whatever don't really the bell know, is, it is might the... just be an existential yeah. proposition. Yeah. But Who please knows? do yeah. subscribe. That would be great. Yeah. Or not. Go with how you Sorry, feel. Sorry, late flight. Everything's a bit kind of... <laughs> okay, we need to say a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Guys, we couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much. 
also to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe. Uh, Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey. And in Australia. Would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. Do they sell this? Uh, if they don't, what well, they must do. They're Australian. Yeah. Maybe they do. You can buy Castlemaine 4X. <laughs> you can buy Fosters. <laughs> Stuffed Huntsman Spiders. Yes. What's that okay. car brand that you have that's a General Motors car brand? That's Holden. A, Holden. There's Holden. nowhere else. Holden you. Yeah. I had a hold on you. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Oh, you can buy all those things at Pedal Empire. <laughs> I, I had a, the, like this ute, right? A ute is and a I, utility vehicle for anyone who uh, is not aware of that. And it was, a, it was a rust bucket. And I had it all done up and it was perfect. And my friend says, oh, I just need to, you know, can you drive this place for me? He said, yeah, yeah. So I drove down. So just hang here for a second. And before, he, and I sat there and I thought, what is that? And he, he got a, um, one of those little, loaders full of sand and just dumped it in the back of my ute. I'm like, what are you doing? He says, well, if I had asked you, you would have said no. <laughs> That's what you do with the pickup, people. That's what, yeah, exactly. You pick things up in it. Um, also, to everyone who's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and purchased a t-shirt or a snow globe or uh, um, single socks. Yeah, uh, lots of use carrier bag. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the relicking guitar case, which yeah. is a, just a... Garbage bag. bag. Yeah, 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 perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. thinking about a whole new range of merch. <laughs> Ideas welcome. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you guys so much. Have a great week and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.